For many years here at First Parish on the Sunday closest to the first day of the new year, we have done a New Year's examine. The examine that we use was created by Julie Dunstan in 2005. Here's what she says about it. Finding God in all things is the catchphrase of Ignatian spirituality. It is a key concept in the return to a more grounded, more experiential faith. And it characterizes Ignatian spirituality from which we get examine. Many of us are no longer satisfied with a God who sits above us aloof, requiring a radical departure or denial of our everyday realities, inner and outer. Though we must certainly accept that God cannot be reduced to our realities, God is always also utterly other. We are, it seems, reclaiming the incarnational God, the God revealed in human form, vulnerable, ordinary, desiring, suffering, transformed. The examine is a prayer practice articulated and made popular by a man who came to be known as Ignatius of Loyola, born in the late 15th century in northern Spain. It is, in short, a way of listening to ourselves and to God. It is a practice of listening contemplatively to our own lives, a tool for discern discerning the presence and absence of God in our lives. God is constantly revealing God's self to us in our experience. It's because God is present and available to human experience that we have a divinely inspired story to tell. Someone has called it reading the scripture of life. St. Ignatius in his teaching of the examine expected that God would speak through our deepest feeling and yearning, what he called consolation and desolation. Consolation is whatever helps us to connect in love to others, ourselves, God, and the universe. Whatever leads to an increase in faith, hope, and love. Desolation is whatever blocks that connection. So what follows is this. If we can reflect upon what in our life connects us to life, love, faith, hope, peace, the qualities of the spirit, we can track where it is God is most available to us, or more precisely where we are most available to God. And the opposite, if we can see where it is we are being drained of life, and then think about how we block God in those areas, this is not the same as feeling merely good or bad. The point is to discern God's presence and will is no longer a case of looking out there, but inside. This morning's examine of the last year is a way of entering this new year with more awareness of where God is speaking to you in your life and where you find yourself being drawn away from God's love. I invite you then to read the scripture of your life. So I want you to take a moment and find a comfortable position. Find a position which is relaxed but alert. A simple and long-standing technique at the beginning of meditation is to use the noticing of our breath to gently bring our awareness and focus inwards. Come near and listen to this. From the beginning, I have never spoken to you obscurely. And all the time these things have been happening, I have been present, thus says Yahweh, your Redeemer, the Holy One. I, your God, teach you what is good for you. I lead you in the way that you must go, if only you had been alert. Become more fully aware now of being in the presence of God, in the presence of love. You are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you. How are you in your body? Let your body be before God. How are you 
in your mind. Let your mind be before God. How are you in your feelings? Let your feelings be before God. In God we live and move and have our being. Give thanks for the presence of God in our humanity, in our physical, intellectual, and emotional realities. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Give thanks for the reality of God loving and living in us and through us. Ask God now to help you to see and understand how her love has been working within you over the last year. Ask God's spirit to enlighten and guide your thoughts. Cleanse the thoughts of our heart by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. Begin to let yourself remember the last year. Don't try too hard. At first, just scan and get a sense of it. Christmas, the time leading up to Christmas, autumn, summer, spring, the year beginning 2021. Now let come what comes at first when you ask these questions. When did I feel best able to give and receive love? What caused in me an increase in faith, hope, and love? Where was I drawn to God? Was it in fears, in joy, in pain, in creativity? Was it in prayer, in liturgy, scripture, creation? In work or leisure, in family, friend, colleague, church community, or neighbor? Did I feel myself being nudged or prompted in a particular way? Out of all the year's experiences, is there one experience that I felt most grateful for? Relish these moments of consolation, of revelation. Give thanks. Now look back again over the year When were you aware of God's absence? When did you feel least able to give or received love? What caused in you a decrease in faith, hope, and love? And when did you fail to respond to God's love at work in you? Without harsh judgment, just let yourself look at that experience. In the light of God's love, what would you like to say to God about that time, event, or experience? What does God want to say to you? And now coming back into the present, what insight, revelation, or grace did you receive from the experiences of the last year? Having reviewed the last year, what gift do you hold for the new year? What would you like to bring in to the new year? You might consider finding a word or phrase or image to represent what you want to carry forward into 2022. This is what I shall tell my heart and so recover hope. The favors of the Lord are not all past. God's kindnesses are not exhausted. God's mercies are new every morning. Great is God's faithfulness. Yahweh is good to those who trust him, to the soul that searches for her. This morning as we 
pray, we pray for grace to move into this new year with love, faith, and hope. For the grace to bring more of what gives us life. For the grace to continue to recognize God in our daily life. Close with a poem by T.S. Eliot, The Four Quartets. But to apprehend the point of intersection of the timeless with time is an occupation for the saint. No occupation either, but something given and taken in a lifetime's death in love, ardor and selflessness and self-surrender. For most of us, there is only the unattended moment, the moment in and out of time, the distraction fit lost in a shaft of sunlight, the wild time unseen, or the winter lightning, or the waterfall, or music heard so deeply that it is not heard at all. But you are the music while the music lasts. Amen.